Hi everyone, and welcome to our advanced tutorial series where I am going to show you how to create a birthday content where it pulls names, pictures, and birth dates from a Google spreadsheet of that month and displays it within the content. Now, this is an advanced tutorial, so it is going to take up a bit of time, but I wanna break this into steps for you because this is a great way to create some automated content. So to get started, I'm in Google Spreadsheets and first we need to make our spreadsheet. So we need to make some headers here and we're gonna go ahead and start out with the person's full name. And next we're gonna move on to date of birth. And then this is gonna be the column where we're gonna be providing the direct link uh, to the picture of the person because we can't put the picture in the Google Sheet itself. So I'm gonna be typing in the name here, the date of birth, and then I've already copied a picture link that I'm going to be pasting here. There we are. And as you can see here, there is the picture that is going to be loaded in. And let's repeat this a couple more times. I already have some sample data that I'm going to go ahead and paste in here and format. All right, the next thing that we need to do here is we need to publish this Google Sheet to the web so it's shareable. So we're gonna click on File, Publish to Web, and then we're gonna click Publish and click OK. Now that we've done this, we need to grab the ID that is found within the URL itself. So we're gonna pull that right now. And we're gonna go ahead and copy this. Everyone's URL is gonna be different, so just keep that in mind. And now what I'm doing is I've pasted our ID into a notepad, but we need to format it in a certain way. So if you go to our XML Connections knowledge base article, the link can be found below in the description, we need to use uh, a certain formatted uh, URL to go ahead and make this so this, that this can be read into an XML format. Here, you're gonna see our URL format that we need to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. And then where it says your ID comes here, we're gonna go ahead and paste that within there as well. There we are. So now that we formatted our link, we're gonna go ahead and copy this. And now we need to add it within our CMS. All right, now that we're in our CMS, what we need to do is we need to go to the settings tab. Now that we're in our settings menu, let's pop open the bar to the left. And then now we're gonna go into our data sources menu. Next thing we need to do is we need to click the add new button and use existing URL. We're gonna type in a name for our data source. Paste in that URL that we had in our notepad. There you can see. And we also need to select Google Sheet as our type. We're also gonna change our refresh time to 15 seconds just to make sure the information is updated as possible and click save. Now that we're back at our homepage, if you haven't already, go ahead and create a content. I've already made one that I'm entering now, but go ahead and create your own. All right, so now that we have our blank canvas here, what we need to do is we need to go into our page properties. From here, I'm gonna select a new background by clicking on the box. And I'm gonna upload a new image, just selecting a file from my PC and click upload. Now that we have it selected, I'm gonna click choose file. And now it's on our background. From here, now we need to bring in our table widget. So drag and drop that onto your canvas. Let's resize it a bit and just position that. And now what we need to do is we need to bind our data. Now we're in our data picker and we need to select the spreadsheet that we added to our data sources previously. Now that we've added our spreadsheet, you can go ahead and select certain columns here. And now we're just making some visible just to show you that this is the same data that we had in our spreadsheet. In this case right now, I just wanna go ahead and choose the picture column. And next thing we wanna do is get rid of the header here and just go ahead and delete that. And now we wanna to come to the column level settings. If we come to this drop-down menu, we're gonna go into picture. Now this has opened up additional formatting settings, but what we wanna do is we wanna change it from text to image. Now that we've done this, our picture is actually gonna display itself. If it were text, your picture would have just displayed its URL instead of the picture. 
Now for our next step, what we want to do is add pagination to the table widget. This is basically going to allow um, not only my picture to show, but other employees as well. So if we go into our table level settings, we want to turn on automatic pagination. Now that it's enabled, we want to go ahead and adjust the page size. In the data tab, you can see here that we have multiple images, but I want to go ahead and turn this to a one page size. Now that's only going to show one image at a time, and it's going to transition between that. Next, what we want to do is we want to add a delay. I'm going to make it seven seconds. And then we also want to add a fade animation. So when it's going from one picture to another, it's going to fade in between. And we can set an animation time. In this case, I'm just going to choose two seconds. And now we need to click Save. And to show you that this works, let's go ahead and save our work and preview. So now we're gonna see our first photo, and then it's gonna transition into the next after seven seconds with that fade animation. There we go, very nice. So now the next thing we need to do is go ahead and click on the bind data option again. And this time what we're going to do is we're gonna hide certain rows based on filters. We only wanna show birthdays for this month. So what we need to do is we need to select our date of birth column, and we need to set certain filtering rules. In this case, we're going to click on the evaluation type uh, drop down menu and we're going to choose not the same month. That basically means that if a birthday is not in this same month, then it will not be displayed because of these filtering settings. So now I need to make some quick adjustments here. So I'm going to go ahead and resize my image. I'm going to center it and then I'm going to bring it down just a little bit here. But now what I want to do is I want to copy this table because it contains some of the same filtering options and other formatting that we need for the name and date of birth. So click on bind data. And now you see that we have many of the same options such as our evaluation type, automatic pagination. And if we click on the data tab and then select columns, we can also select a different column. In this case, we're gonna to untoggle picture. Um, we could choose date of birth, but I'm gonna choose full name for now and remove the header. And then from here, as you can see, it says the name. I'm gonna click save. And let's go ahead and move that down. Now we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing here with date of birth. So let's go ahead and format this here and copy and paste. And now let's come back into data binding. Again, go to select columns. We're gonna to untoggle full name and then we're gonna to toggle date of birth and remove the header as well, and then press save. And now you can see that we now have our picture name and date of birth. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and format the date. So instead of saying the person's date of birth, we want it to say when their birthday is. So for example, um, March 2nd. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our data picker again by clicking on bind data, and we wanna click on the data tab and then we want to open up the column level settings. From here, we're going to click the drop down and click on date of birth. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to toggle the special formatting option. Now you're going to notice this is going to mess up our date here in the top, but we want to select date and time. And then we're going to select formatted date and time and the same for output as well. Now you can see it has adjusted our time here, but no need to worry. You can always untoggle special formatting to look at its original format. So now I'm going to go ahead and toggle that back. But what we want to do is we want to put in our own custom formatting here. And I'm going to show you the web page to reference for this formatting. All right. So um, what I mean by formatting is you're going to go ahead and head to this website in the description here. Um, and what this is doing is basically we want to say, OK, this is the format of the time uh, we started with. And what do we want it to end with? Like, what do we want it to look like? So here is all the different formatting options. For example, uh, for uppercase Y's um, is going to be the full year. Um, and so I already have my formatting options that you can just type in, but I wanted to give this to you as a reference. All right, so now that we're back in our data picker, you can see that I put in my formatting options. I'm gonna untoggle it to show you what we started with and now what it looks like. So basically we're just putting the month and then the day that the person's birthday is. As you can see, this is the formatting options that we started with here with the month, day, and then the year. But again, now we just wanna have the month and the day. So um, if you want to use my formatting, just copy and paste what I have. Um, if you want to put in your own, um, you can go ahead and um, just follow the uh, link in the description. But 
I'm gonna click save and now you can see that our formatting has changed in our canvas. Congratulations on getting this far. Um, at this point, we've pretty much done all the hard stuff, but what we wanna do now is we wanna format um, our text here from our table widget. So once it's selected, you're gonna head into the other properties of the widget. And from here, we can uh, basically change the font size. Um, I can also change the font family. Um, in this case, I'm just using a, a custom font that I already uploaded. Um, and then I'm gonna change the font color as well. Um, I'm going to use one of our hex codes here, but you can, you know, pick your own color if you'd like. Oop, looks like I typed that in wrong here. There we go. All right, so now that we're going to do the same thing with the date of birth that we did with the name. So I've selected my table. I'm going to change the font size and then change my font family. And I'm just going to leave it on the black color for now. Um, so nothing to change there. Let's just go ahead and move it. And... Now you've formatted your text. All right, for this next step, what we wanna do now is we want to format our picture. So I wanna have a sort of round photo with a shape behind it. So I'm gonna go into the other properties and I'm gonna open up these three dots. These are our additional properties. And if I come here, I'm just gonna put the round slider all the way up here and that will give me a perfect circle. And I'm gonna, I can adjust the opacity if I'd like to, if I wanna do some cool effects, but I'm gonna leave it at 100 for now. Now for our next step, let's go ahead and bring in that shape I was talking about. Um, you're gonna have to eyeball this one a little bit, but just go ahead and select the circle shape. And again, you're gonna have to eyeball it. So let me just resize this a little bit here and see what works. Thankfully, I've centered this, so it's gonna make it a little bit easier. Go to your other properties if you need to make micro adjustments here with our size and position. Um, so this is where you can get it almost pixel perfect. I think that looks about right. Um, so let's go ahead and change our line width to zero and change our fill color. And I'm gonna change the same color I used previously by using my recent colors. And there we are. For the final part of this tutorial, let's go ahead and start adding animations to each of these table widgets and our shape widget. So I'm gonna click on our picture table and I'm gonna go to the other properties. I'm gonna scroll all the way down and open up those three dots, the additional properties, and we're gonna go ahead and add an inner animation. I'm gonna have this fade in and I'm gonna have it fade out as well. So let's go ahead and change the same thing for the name. Opening up the three dots, adjusting the animation as well. But this one, I wanna have fade in and I'm gonna set a delay. So in this case, I'm gonna offset it by one second and then I'm gonna have it fade out. I don't need to set a delay here. Let's go ahead and change the table again. Same process. I'm gonna choose fade in. I'm gonna offset this one as well by 1.2 seconds and then we're gonna have this fade out as well. So just kind of staggering my animations time just to make it look a little bit better here. Um, I'm going to go to my shape widget here and in our other properties, I'm going to have it fade in as well. Um, I'm just going to leave that time at zero um, for the delay, but I'm going to have it pulse. So as you can see in our canvas now, you can see that pulse animation. I don't want it to happen every second, so I'm going to make it every three seconds and then we're going to have it fade out as well. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and save our changes and preview. So congratulations on completing the content. Um, that's it. As you can see, um, the picture, the name, and the date of birth are all fading um, and even brought in with some nice fade in animations. We also have that shape pulsing in the background as we transition from one employee to the next. So that's actually gonna be it for this video. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at sales at Thank you and see you next time.